Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do another Q&A video. It's been a while since I've done one. Most of the questions I'll be answering today, guys, are related to snowblowers. And before I get started, I want to welcome all my new subscribers and those that are watching today. So the first thing I want to show you guys today is about spark plugs. Now in my hand here, I've got a spark plug that you will get when you buy a snowblower. They're Chinese torch spark plugs. It's pretty well what all the manufacturers put into their machines. However, I want to give you a suggestion, guys, to only use NGK or Champion spark plugs. They're much better. You can see this plug here. It's got a huge crack in the porcelain. It was actually defective, even though it had a bit of spark. And when equipment comes in my shop, I always remove them and put a Champion or NGK spark plug in there. You might pay a few dollars extra, guys, but it's definitely worth it. Another question I often get in the shop and online is, can I use an adjustable carb on a snowblower that previously had a non-adjustable carburetor? The answer to that is yes, you can install an adjustable carburetor on a newer snowblower that already had a non-adjustable carburetor. So for those of you guys that aren't familiar with what an adjustable carb is and a non-adjustable carburetor is, I'm going to show you one of each here. To start with, the adjustable carburetor here that you see has a jet that you can adjust at the bottom. The bottom screw here adjusts the amount of fuel that is going through your carburetor and to the engine. The side screw here adjusts the air intake of the carburetor. And by the way, this is a Tecumseh snowblower engine carburetor. And on the newer Tecumseh engines, you will find these carburetors here. They're non-adjustable. They've got no screw at the bottom. And on the side here where the other adjustment screw was, there's a little cap and it's a fixed jet in there. There's no adjustments to be made. The only adjustment that you can make on the non-adjustable carb is the speed of the idle, which is this mechanical screw over here. You won't interfere with the air fuel mixture going in your car by adjusting this screw. It will only adjust the speed of your engine when it's idling. So you can easily install an adjustable carburetor on an engine that had a non-adjustable carburetor. The benefits of having the adjustable carburetor is that you can adjust it to stop the surging if ever you get that problem. What I mean by surging is when your engine is revving up and down because it's either lacking fuel or lacking air and it can be very annoying. So that's the benefit of this carb is you can easily get rid of that problem by manually adjusting the air intake and the fuel intake of your carburetor. So I prefer the adjustable carburetors and I have myself put an adjustable carburetor on an engine that had a non-adjustable one. You might pay a little more for this carburetor, but it's definitely worth it. And by the way, guys, I do have some videos on how to replace a carburetor on an engine. Also, how to adjust the carburetor and the links are below the video today. Now, another question I often get in the shop and online is what kind of oil should I use in my snowblower? Well, what I recommend is an SAE 530 or 520 motor oil. Try to buy a good brand like Castrol or some other reputable brand. You can use a synthetic oil if you want in your snowblower, but it's not necessary. And by the way, guys, if you use your snowblower for home use only, you should replace your oil on a yearly basis. If you're using your machine to do commercial work, you should replace it a few times every winter. One thing I do want to mention, guys, in this video is if you're thinking about buying a snowblower, First, go watch my video that talks about what to look for when buying a used snowblower. The link's under the video. And I'm also recommending that if you can afford a brand new snowblower, if you need one, go that way because you're going to avoid a lot of problems. A lot of blowers that are for sale online have never been serviced ever. I see them come in the shop all the time. I've told people, buy a new machine, they didn't listen. And a week later, they bring this machine in my shop and it needs hundreds of dollars of repairs. And the good thing about buying it new is that you can maintain it from day one. It's a lot easier to maintain a machine that is brand new, that hasn't been left outside. And you're also going to know the history of it. You know that the oil's been changed regularly, that it's been greased regularly, and the machine will last a lot longer. Now, my last question for today is, are aftermarket chainsaw cylinder kits good? Well, my answer to that is yes and no. 
It's a lot of hit and miss. What I mean by hit and miss is some kits are good, some aren't. It's hard to tell before you get them, especially if you order them online from China. Now I do have a few repair videos where I've replaced cylinder kits using aftermarket cylinders and they were good. I'll put a link under the video so you can see that. However, lately I've been getting a lot of kits that are not good. For example, I got a kit for an O26 this summer. I put the kit in and the compression was so low right off the bat after the kit was in that the chainsaw would not run properly. It would not idle. When I did a compression test, it was way below 100. Usually I like to have about 150 or more. So just be careful if you buy aftermarket kits for your chainsaws. If you do it for yourself, it's not a big deal. But if you're doing it for customers, you want to make sure you're using good quality aftermarket kits. The best aftermarket kits out there are made by Tecomec. They're made in Italy and they're really good kits. If you did buy a cheap kit, make sure it's Nicosil coated. It might be better than the rest. And while I'm on the subject of aftermarket kits, guys, if you see a chainsaw or two cycle equipment on local classifieds online that says freshly rebuilt and they're selling it for two, three hundred bucks, you know that it's not an OEM cylinder kit that they've put in because it would cost more than that just to buy the kit OEM. So be extremely cautious if you see anything advertised like that because what they've done is they bought a cheap kit on Amazon or eBay, put it in the saw and threw it online to sell. And usually the best way to know if it's an OEM kit, if you're able to see the cylinder, on this cylinder here it says steel, sometimes it'll say MALLE, M-A-H-L-E, and here's some more identifying numbers here. This cylinder block here is OEM as well, and it's marked steel underneath with a part number. This goes into a steel MS-180. Now you won't see these markings unless you take the top cover off the chainsaw and on the MS-180 it's really hard to see these markings underneath because it's all covered in plastic. But the first thing you want to do when you buy a chainsaw is pull it over to feel the compression. If the compression feels good then you're probably good to go. But if you want to make sure that it's an OEM kit you will have to look at the cylinder in these areas. Now this one is pretty well impossible to see but if you do buy a used cylinder block like this you can look underneath. And again look on the sides here of a cylinder to see if it's OEM or not. Now the reason I'm mentioning this today is because I see a lot of people posting saws and cutoff saws online mentioning that they're freshly rebuilt and I know from the price that there's no way it's an OEM cylinder kit they've put in and then an unsuspecting buyer comes by, buys it and ends up with problems. So just try to steer away from the Chinese kits that are cheap. I'm not saying they're all bad, there are some good ones out there and I've used them before. But just do your homework, make sure they're Nicosil coated, and if you're going to buy a saw, be extremely careful. And by the way, I do recommend that you buy a new chainsaw instead of a used one if you can afford it. So that's it for today's Q&A, guys. Thanks for watching. Also, make sure to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and have yourselves a great day.